Marina Dries. I would not be Karimi Dries if it was not for my mother and my father. Okay. So I come from a long line of teachers, I come from a long line of uh, ancestry, lineage, um, and just a long line of people that are looking to be free. Um, myself being at the tail end of that, we all have heard the terminology, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. <coughs> In that statement, the first is always first. The first shall be last and the last shall be first. <coughs> We're dealing with the first. No matter what position, no matter what area, you think you might be in, you are always the first. You're the first. And don't let anybody tell you anything differently. Know that within yourself lies a great potential that you are still in the process of tapping into. You are a work in progress and you are on the journey to become the you that is to be. I know it gets stressful at times, I know it gets hard at times. I know that it's a lot of sacrifice involved. I know there's, there's a loss of life involved. There's some setbacks involved, but there's also some joy involved. There's also some love involved. There's also some caring and uh, just a mutual, uh, a mutual feeling involved with those that are in your circle that have been designed to be placed in your circle to be your reflection. Those who are in your immediate circle, those who are not in your immediate circle, it's another characteristic of you. It's another reflection of yourself. Because in order to be able to see anything from a person that's in your immediate circle, or those who are not in so much immediate circle, you have to be able to recognize what that is that you're looking at or what that is that you feel. So it actually is a portion of you and you've created this experience because you love yourself that much. You love yourself that much that you would design your journey in order to fulfill that prophecy. That's how much you love yourself. No matter what might be deterring you or no matter what might be distracting you from your goal, from your mission, you loved yourself enough to be able to bypass that and surmount that obstacle and continue on the road of becoming the you that is to be. So I want to, uh, I wanted to say that because I think it's important. You know, I don't know how many times we hear that. You know, we live our lives uh, vicariously <clears throat> through what we perceive to be happiness, what we perceive to be success. So we're living these vicarious lives through all, all of these different illusions and things that are not organic. And we are so great of a people, we're able to adapt even when that process is not organic and still make something out of nothing and still surmount that and still elevate. You have to understand the depth of that. You have to overstand the depth of that. For you to be able to take something that's inorganic and still make it authentic in your psyche, in your heart, and in your spirit, and still climb. That's heavy. That's heavy. And that's what we do on a regular day on a, on a regular daily basis. Alright? So, not to get too much into the verbiage because I want to honor the Egun and the ancestors um, first before we actually even get into saying whatever I have to say, because that's most important. I am because we are. If it wasn't for my Egun, I wouldn't be here right now. So I have to honor them and 
you know, we should do this on a regular basis in the confines of our own home, you know. This is not something that, you know, is just done at a lecture. It's done when I'm by myself, you know. And we need to establish a relationship with our ancestors. Because they'll, you know, they'll let you know when, you know, you, you're putting on and, you know, you're not actually honoring them, you know. It's a relationship. It's a relationship. There's no such thing as death. It's only the transition. Only the transition, all right? Um, and this transition um, that has been dubbed death, it's a reason behind that. It's a reason why we've been made to believe that this transition is finite. It's a reason why we've been taught that, you know, this is a pause or a sojourn or a break in the continuum of the circle. It's a reason for that. The reason is, if it was known that there is no death, and if it was known that this is merely a transition when we change our physical vehicles, and there's a continuum with our soul that's eternal, how much do you think your self-esteem would elevate? It would elevate a great deal. Because you know that this experience is not the end. So, coming from a perspective of knowing that this existence is not the end, first of all, it motivates you to not delve too deep into matters that you feel as though you don't have any control over. It's been a while, because I mean, I grew up in a Baptist church. You know, but um, it's been a while. All right. Somebody pray for me. Had me on their mind. I'm so glad they pray for me. I'm so glad they pray. I'm so glad they pray. I'm so glad they pray for me. My mama prayed for me. She had me on her mind. She took the time to pray for me. I'm so glad she prayed. I'm so glad she prayed. I'm so glad she prayed for me. My papa prayed for me. He had me on his mind. Took the time to pray for me. I'm so glad he prayed. I'm so glad he prayed. I'm so glad he prayed for me. All right. I will be back in the Shaitan regime. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إحدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. All right. So the topic today is 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 is, is pretty um. I won't use the word. Yeah, it was strange. It's good to eat. I was thinking about it and just came to me, um, God against the gods. And it was very fitting. It was very fitting because for me, um, I've, you know, had an experience of, you know, um, stepping foot in a whole, you know, a plethora of different schools, you know. So a question I've had is does God change with your religion or does God change with you? 
Does God change with your religion or does God change with you? There's only one source. And that one source, it permeates through us all. Okay? We can recognize the beauty, the power, the majesty in the all and everything that's around us. When we are in tune with that, our life becomes easier. When we're away from that, our life becomes difficult. It becomes a struggle. Why? Because you're struggling with the very essence of who you are. And when you're struggling against the essence of who you are, nothing lasts. Nothing lasts. However, when you're dealing and you're in tune with that vibration and that source that permeates through us all, not only will you get epiphanies, not only will you experience nirvana, but you will incarnate you, you will incarnate and embody uh, beyond bliss. You'll incarnate beyond bliss as far as your feeling because your your interactions with others, your interactions with your, you, you know your the way in which you treat yourself, everything becomes enlightenment. Um, we look at the terminology of prayer and we look at meditation. Prayer is when we're asking the Creator. Um, prayer is when we're asking a deity. Prayer is when we're asking some kind of external force for assistance in a matter. When we talk about meditation, we're being quiet and we're being still and we're allowing that force to actually communicate with us. So there's a difference. One, we're actually requesting. One, we're receiving. Okay, so there's a difference between prayer and meditation. All right. um, of course, if you feel as though you don't have the strength to carry on, it's incumbent upon you to seek assistance and seek help. No doubt about it. <coughs> However, you have been provided for with full faculties, the ability to actually solve the issues or the obstacles that you are going through. You, you've been blessed with those things. You've been given those things. Thus, we go into the, the title, God Against the Gods. Right. Because for a person to tell you that you do not have for a person to tell you that you do not have the ability or you do not have the right to have a relationship with the all, you have to question that. You have to question that. It's an uncomfortability which will uh, sever ties with a lot of different people. You know, people that we find to be um, close to us. But sometimes they're actually placed within our circle for us to learn a particular lesson, okay? Um, and there's no good or bad about it because, you know, good and bad is based on perception. But we can say that something is healthy versus something being non-healthy. Something is not healthy for us. And if we're in a process of becoming the we that is to be and there's an energy that's trying to stifle that or to take you away from that course, we don't say that that's bad, we say that that's not healthy. It's not healthy, all right? Because it's on, a such, it's on such a low vibratory rate that it can cause you to become stagnant. And there's a lot of us who've lost our way. After, you know, coming into enlightenment, a lot of people think that once you come into enlightenment or your eyes become open, they think that's, that's it. It's a struggle. It's, it's, a, it's a challenge of utmost proportions because not only are you faced with responsibility now, you now are charged with the responsibility with your interactions with others because you know you know the, the gravity of every interaction that you have with every single person or creature. 
So it takes work. It takes work. Um, and that can be a, a frightening thing, you know, especially when you see the reality, you know, of what this is. Um, however, there is also within you the confirmation, which allows you to continue on and also reaffirms and motivates you to keep moving towards your mission. Okay? Don't think that you were just given enlightenment and you were left by yourself. That was it. No. Because remember, you have backing from your, from your guardians. You got backing from your ancestors. You got backing from just those energies that want to see you uh, excel. Why do they want to see you excel? Because if you excel, they excel. If you excel, they excel. There is no, there is, it's a continuum. It's no breaking or breakage. See, we, what we do is we individualize things so much that we don't, we, indiv we individualize things so much that our life becomes segmented. Our life becomes segmented. So we have a time to be in a church. We have a time to be in a mosque. We have a time to be at our nine to five. We have a time to be with our family. We have the time to be with strangers. We have a time to be whoever. It's all segmented. However, that is not the African concept of I am because we are. Because it permeates every interaction and everything that you do on a daily basis, 24-7. We're getting back to that. We're getting back to that. All right? Um, <coughs> So brother told me, said, listen, you, you know, you're at the crossroads. Yes, indeed. You know, and it's funny because we look at objects like this and we don't understand the esoteric meaning of what this is, you know, but because of your preconceived teaching and conditioning, as soon as we look at the cross, we automatically think of Jesus Christ dying. We might even go so far as to have an image of uh, a white man on the cross dying for your sins. But let's look a little bit closer now. When we look at the cross, it is actually targeting each direction. North, south, east, west. You are at the crossroads because you are faced with the decision that you have to make. And when you are at the crossroads, when there's a decision that you have to make, you have to take very careful consideration about the next step. Because the next step is a sacrifice. Because you will be losing something and you will be gaining something. But then you can look at it again and understand the science of it and use the science to better your situation. That's powerful. But our ancestors have always done that. They've taken the scraps and they've used alchemy to make it something greater than what it was. We've adapted. Look at the environment we're in. We're still adapting. Making our environment better than what it was for ourselves, in our communities. So, that is one of our strengths amongst the many, okay? <coughs> um, a young sister asked me what was burning here. Um, and it's different things. Amongst the things that are burning is mugwort, um, uh, chrysanthemums, um, patchouli, uh, copal, uh, myrrh, frankincense. Um, this is what's burning right now. And there's a reason why all those things are burning. It's funny because our brothers, the plants, brother plant, uh, always has a way of identifying uh, those around you, preceding your knowledge, 
of who's in front of you. Our brother Earth has a very peculiar way of letting you know who's stepping on the same ground that you're standing on and having that knowledge precede you and then enlighten you later. You know, Sister Water uh, promotes life. Without Sister Water, um, there would be no life. Sister Air, um, what can I say? The continuum of changes when you're at that crossroads. In order to actually go to the crossroads, you have to be pushed. So when we actually understand the elements and we understand the things that are around us and we understand the deep role that they play in our lives, that's also something that's liberating. Our enemies didn't understand that. They didn't understand that. That you're that powerful. For you to be able to speak something into existence. See, the thing is, is that we can say we want something, but if we have to keep asking for that same thing, we don't really want it. Because we should ask for it one time, and that alignment is so great that we're not busying ourselves asking for that thing. Now we're waiting f for the reception and receiving it. You see the difference? The difference is, if you have to keep on asking for something, that shows that there's a limited amount of faith that you have that you want to actually obtain that thing. But if you can ask for that thing, and then after that, be open to the reception of that thing, it will come expeditiously. You're wasting time asking for the same thing. We have to put forth action took action for the person to actually go to the tailor. It took action for the person to actually stand on the podium. It took action for the person to actually leave that shop. And it also took energy for that person to come back and return and pick it up. That's action. It's not going to happen without work. It's going to take work. <coughs> There's nothing wrong with work. See, we've been taught to believe that work is a bad thing because we've been working for so long we haven't had any we haven't had any reward for our work. You're working for years. And not just you, your ancestors that came before you, working for years, had a job for 30 something years, and then before them had a job for 20 something years, and then before them they worked and didn't get paid, built America with their bare hands, got nothing for it. This is the reason why we approach work the way that we do. Because we don't see the reward in it. It's not yours. So if somebody gives you something, it is different. Um, somebody gives you something. Than when you earn it. Yes, it's different from when you earned it. And you work for it. And you work for it. Remember, the nurturing is you own that thing, so you're going to cultivate it. You're going to cultivate it. If somebody gives you something based on a loan, your feeling towards that thing is going to be totally different from something that you own and have the ability to actually nurture and cultivate. Because you know that there's really no connection with that thing. You'll be giving it back soon. And in a lot of cases, you'll be giving it, you'll be giving it back soon, better than what it was, and you'll receive no credit for that, nor will you see, receive any reward for that. This is the situation, you know. We we are building someone else's dream. We are building somebody else's reality. We are uh, laboring, in fact, laboring. But how much time do you take? You know, it's funny because we call our dreams hobbies. We call our dreams hobbies. It's something that we do after we do the nine to five. You know, what you like to do? I like to, you know, study martial arts, or I like to, you know, sew, or I like to cook, or I like to, you know, do this or do that. Why aren't you doing that? Well, I, my bills got to get paid. I can't do that. If I do that and I depend on the people, you know, where will I be? Where will my family be? In that vein, you've just collapsed and killed your dream. You got in your own way. No one can get in your way. No one can get in your way. Even if you believe in the devil. They say shaitan. 
Only a shaitan can give you the waswas or whisper. Can't do anything beyond that. Only whisper. After the shaitan whispers to you, it is you who make the choice to embark upon that whispering but actually ignore it. But believe me, if you embark upon it, you know, you make your process just that much longer. Because remember, you have to, the, the thing is this, it's not just about moving forward and, for, and forgetting, you have to move forward while you rectify. Move forward, rectify, move forward, rectify. No matter if a person gets, you know, touchy about it, no, you're doing this for you. It's very important. Um, Wakanda, Manito, Oringa, Ashe, Chi, Prana, Holy Ghost, slash Holy Spirit, <clears throat> Ruh Kudus. All these things are saying the same thing. Wakanda, Manito, Aringa. This is what the indigenous people of this land call Ashe. And it's very interesting because their understanding of the Wakanda or the Manito or the Aringa, it totally coincides with what we, what we call Ashe. Or that, that universal energy that permeates through everything and so it be. Same thing as when, you know, people say amen. So it be. But we even know that the roots of amen go back to amen. So that's, you know. However, it was interesting when I, when I saw that this is their terminology of how they actually uh, connotate ashe. <coughs> You'll notice that when you're setting up your bobara or your universal altar, you always have a, 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 an indigenous bust and a bust would be from the crown to mid body of an indigenous earth walker which we call native americans which are wrongfully called indians all right this is a part of your bulbara all right and we set this up because we want to be in contact with the with those spirits that preceded us naturally cultivating the land and also having a relationship with the land that's the most important part, having a relationship with the land. They have a lot to teach us. They have a lot to teach us. Every step that we take is meditation. When we're stepping on, on the earth, it's a meditation because there's so much involved right there because you are connecting with that which is below your feet. You're connecting with that which is above your head. You're connecting with those things that are to your left and to your right. Start to begin to create your own rituals. Start to begin to create your own rituals. You don't have to read somebody else's ritual in order to uh, solidify that ritual. That person is actually implementing a particular ritual for variables that you do not see. But those, var those variables are adjacent to their reality. <coughs> you yourself have to create your own rituals. It's funny because we do it unconsciously. We do it unconsciously. Even those, you know, even our, you know, our, our, our family that's, you know, very religious and, you know, they do it themselves. You go to their home, you see pictures up, you see a bowl of candy. They say it's for anybody who wants to pick it up. You got those, you know, those butterscotch mints. You know, they got a little candle rack, altars. But. They implemented that actual ritual, but they forgot and they, they got amnesia to the actual meaning of it. All right, I won't say that they don't know, but they've they've received the amnesia. All right, just like we ourselves have, you know, we we forgot a lot of who we are, and that's by design. That's by design. Um, we we sometimes have these epiphanies. We sometimes have these epiphanies that remind us of what we knew, but it's not very enduring or it's not very lasting as far as time is concerned. So, 
it's upon us to try to isolate that time and extend upon it. And one of the ways you can do that is through your dreams, when you dream. You'll get a lot of messages through your dreams. You should have a, uh, you should have a notepad and a pen by your bed. You should have a, note, a notepad and a pen by your bed. And I would even say a notepad and a pen and not your phone, because you know we in this, we in a, we in a uh, technical lot, technology and you know, this age right now where everything is done on your phone. That's done by design. Don't you know that if you do everything on your phone, if you no longer had that phone, you would be lost? So wean yourself away even from that. Don't get comfortable. This, this is the thing. Don't be comfortable. Know that you are a wayfarer and you're passing through this life making a sojourn. The person who's passing through this life as a wayfarer and they're making a sojourn, they don't ever set up things because they know that it's not gonna last that long. Please understand what I'm saying. Please overstand what I'm saying right now. I'm not saying establish yourself, take care of your family and all that kind of stuff, but know that you are passing through. This is a sojourn. So, <clears throat> with that being said, we'll go back to the original thought, what I prefaced everything with. Make sure that you start to create your own rituals. And you don't gotta explain it to nobody. <coughs> you don't gotta. What's that? What you doing? Why is it like that? No, because what'll happen is you'll get so deep into explaining the way that you'll doubt it, trying to make this other person understand. But their mission is to take you off course. That's their mission. Their mission is to take you off course so that you do not become the you that is to be. You're looking at it like it's a, it's a, it's a, a normal interaction. It's a normal interaction. Somebody put, came and just put some shuck or doubt in your mind or in your heart about something that you're doing. And then you take that shuck. <coughs> shuck is uh, Arabic for doubt. You, or or, or, or uh, shubahat. Shub, shub These are doubts. So you take that doubt, right? And then you move on after, after you have this experience with them. You take that in your home. Now, not only you are, are you doubtful about it, now you're spreading that doubt to your, your family. You know, I, you know, I met somebody today, and you know, they told me um, this, and you know, kind of like, maybe what we're doing isn't like, you know. And they're looking at you because you're supposed to be, you know, who you're supposed to be. And it's like, well, dang. You know what I mean? What, what, who's all the sacrifice for? These people were set up to take you away from your mission. You gotta understand it. You have to, you have to see it with a clear eye. And I'm I'm smiling because it's so it's it's so it's so enchanting. It's great, man. When you can, you know, like really see things for what they are. And you and you know how spirit moves, and it's like something happened. And everybody don't know what's going on, but you see what's going on. You see exactly what's going on. And then you can act accordingly. You can act accordingly. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll fix that. We'll rectify that. You know, let's, we'll rectify that. That's okay. You don't even have to be open about it. You got, well, I'm going to fix this because it's out of array. No, it's not about you. It's not about you. So you rectify it, and you can do it, you know, do it in secret. What my grandma say, never let your right hand know what your left hand's doing. You ain't got to tell everybody everything. You wonder why your life is in turmoil or in shambles, because you're telling people everything before it manifests and coming to fruition. Yo, I'm about to get a new job. Word. Damn, I've been unemployed for like, yo, you get a new job? You ain't getting a new job, nigga. Well, they come back and check on you. Hey, yo, what's up with that new job? Man, you know, they didn't even call me back. Oh, for real? They didn't call you back? Set up. Set up. Silence! It's great. Silence is great sometimes. Silence will save your life. 
Silence will save your life. So I understand what, you know, our youth, they terminalize this whole snitch thing, because it's a deeper level even on the snitch tip. When they be like, you know, no snitches, snitches get stitches. It's a deeper esoteric meaning behind that. It's a deeper esoteric meaning behind that. The code of silence. <coughs> With the code of silence, we all know that things are safe. But if we have to question your ability to keep silence, we have some doubt. We have some doubt even in how we interact. Because I don't know that what I'm going to tell you is it will remain safe. I don't know if what I tell you will spread. I don't know that if you will take what I told you as a vulnerability and try to harm me in some subliminal way. I don't know because your track record isn't the greatest. Silence is great at times. The reason why I won't make a blanket statement and say silence is good all the time because there are times where the community has to talk and eliminate the cancer. There are times that the community has to talk and eliminate the cancer. We're not talking about the police. We are our own police. You know that. You know that. It's always been like that. Truth be told. So, when we start to go back to these different qualities and these etiquettes and these codes of conduct that we used to have in, a, in, a, in the most authentic, organic, purest, essential African mind, we will liberate ourselves from the situation that we're in right now and we will be able to move forward. Be able to move forward. Um, <coughs> when we're talking about the continuum, and I had mentioned it a little bit briefly before, we're talking about the linear, the linear, the linear aspect of your reality. You know, we look at things like, you know, as being unforgivable. The, the more we move forward, the more, you know, uh, our, our past is pending. Or, you know, the more that we move forward, um, you know, we're still seen in that light. You know, when we talk about the circular, uh, you know, world view of African people, we know it's a continuum. We know it's a continuum. And we know that This time right now is just as important as it was then. You know, it's funny and it's, and it's deep because, all right, we was about to begin a lecture, you know, begin a lecture or whatever like that. And I'm just looking at all of the ancestors, like, you know, just spotted, you know what I mean? And it's like they talk to you. They talk to you. You know, they talk to you through the images. Like, you can invoke something, like, you know, invoking something that is a, 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 a quality trait of them. When they, were, when they were personified and walked the earth. You knew them to be a certain way, and you still take their energy when you see their image. It's deep, you know what I'm saying? Like you can actually, you know, so now we're moving into a line of how do you obtain certain qualities that you don't know that you have that are lying dormant? You draw from catalysts that are around you. How do you become courageous? Well, I can look at a picture of my grandma and become courageous. How do I know how to be uh, studious and prudent and, 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 and far-reaching and, 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 and want to excel? I can look at a picture of my grandpa and see that. So these are the things that inspire you. Because you take the personality traits, the characteristics of those people who are close to you in your circle while they were walking the earth. They never died. They're still imprinted on this reality on this reality. So you can always draw from that. Having a bad day. You have nobody to talk to. Well, you go back to a conversation that you used to have with grandma. Or you go back to a conversation that you used to have with your cousin, or your sister or your brother. And automatically, you snap out of it. What are you doing? You're channeling. You're channeling. These are not scary things. These are not scary things. Automatic writing. Had my first experience. Boom. <clears throat> so I'm, you know, I'm, 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 
I'm writing something down. And all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute. I want to be able to express myself without all of these confines that I've learned in school. Comma, semicolon, period, capital. This is a run on sentence. No, we bypassing all of that. We're just gonna flow. Automatic writing, my first experience. They hear about, you know, you hear about the, you know, the enemy. They try to, they try to promote it like it's something spooky. The only, rate, the only reason why they promote it as something spooky is because they don't want you to tap into it. So they gotta promote it like that so that you yourself don't have a connection to something that's already innate within you. They're, they're playing catch up and they can never catch up. But I'll say one thing, they have mastered, <coughs> they mastered the ability to be the minority and project themselves as the majority. That's very powerful. For you to be the minority and project yourself as a majority? Come on, man. I mean, how much... And we talk about words of power and, you know, affirmations and this law and that law. That's heavy. If I can make you think that I'm Goliath and I'm David, that's, that's deep. That's deep. So the thing is... Is that we have to go into the recesses of our heart and our minds and create our own rituals, which is very important. I'm going to tell you that's important. I'm going to keep stressing that it's important because you need to know how important you are. You need to know how important you are. So we're talking about this automatic thing, this automatic writing thing. So I did it, and I'm going through pages. I'm going through pages. I turn the page, and there's so much going on because it's the fear of maybe this is not legible, or maybe this is, you know, maybe it's going to wear off and I want it to make sense to me. Or maybe it's not enough paper or I'm writing off the page. <clears throat> All these different thoughts are going in my mind. I'm just automatic writing. Boom, 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 boom. Taking, just, just writing. You know, anybody, you ever saw the movie Insidious? You saw Insidious? Anybody seen Insidious? All right, my man saw Insidious. You saw Insidious? Everybody? Okay. It's been a while. If, it's been a while. Okay, if you haven't seen Insidious, Check out Insidious. Insidious is not scary. It is chock full of esoteric messages. It is chock full of esoteric messages. They went into that room, and this is the deep part about it. We're talking about the linear aspect. Remember we talked about the linear aspect? But we said when the African continuum, we're talking about that circular, that circular, you know, that circular thinking or way, way of being. You know, like uh, Marimba Ani says, let the circle be unbroken. So boom, check this out. They both were in the room. It was a man and a woman. The woman tapped into the actual connection with the entity, but the guy tapped into recording everything that was being played out or the interaction between the woman and the spirit. He was automatic writing or order, the process is called automatic writing. When you are no longer confined to writing, scrying. So what happened was when he when he was going across the page and everything, and see automatic writing, it, it, it takes different forms. You can you can actually be writing, you know, words. Because I've had automatic writing where I've been writing in English and then start writing in graffiti and then go to Arabic and go straight the, the other way, you know. So when I go back to look at it, I have somebody else look at it, somebody in my close circle, of course, look at it, and I say, you know, just, I don't even tell them what happened. Yo, just read this. Wow. You know, I don't have to pay, you know, $250 for an Ebo. <coughs> I don't have to go to a Babalao or a priest. <coughs> I got my reading right there. That was my reading right there. So they go into it, and just to make sure that you, you know, just to make sure that that you want the same wavelength, make sure you know you can pinch yourself, and you get these messages. Messages come all over the place. Numbers. 
I remember listening. It was deep because these certain number patterns used to be coming to me on a regular basis. Without fail. Without fail. Look at the clock. Boom, that's the number. You know? Um, get in the car, boom, that's the that's the number one station. So I said, you know what? There's some there's something going on with this. I don't know what it is yet, but somebody's trying to tell me something. So what I would do what, what I would do is I would actually start to assess the moments in time where I would see the numbers to see if it correlated with what that message was. So I would be checking my patterns now. Okay, I see the number now. What am I doing? Okay, I'm doing this. <coughs> But the intelligence of the numbers is surpassed and went beyond that because when I got on to it, the numbers switched. The numbers switched. Totally different pattern. So that particular number was already mastered. I got that. We don't need to keep sending you the same number. We're going to give you another number now. So this is for another, another challenge for you. You know, this is a, another... You know, I, I like I like those um I like those movies where they got the you know the, the 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 hero and you know they gotta go through all these different obstacles and you know like the like a uh, Lord of the Rings or the uh, even a video game Legend of Zelda. That used to be my twist when I was young. Legend of Zelda. Fantasy come on, that was, that was come on. <laughs> Legend of Zelda. Mm -hmm. Serious, and the graphics wasn't even thorough like that. I mean, really going back, I mean, you, they, they throw for you when you're a young boy looking at it, but, I mean, come on. You go back and look at Legend of Zelda, Zelda now, I mean, the bit had the, I don't even know what the bits were. It wasn't even 16-bit, I don't think. It's eight. So, now, we're looking at the storyline of what Legend of Zelda was. You're on a mission. You're collecting different weapons. You're collecting different swords. You're meeting sorcerers and wizards, and they're giving you information. And you got to go save the princess. And you got to go here to this distant land. Yo, that's where we are. That's where you are. You are the Hyrule on your journey, becoming yourself again, and breaking every pitchfork that surmounts itself. You're breaking pitchforks along the way. That's what you're doing. Very serious. Don't ever think that um, an interaction was just, you know, something that was, you know, without base, without basis or without, you know, having a, an imprint or foundation. You know, interactions are very spiritual because you're a spiritual, you're a spirit, you're a soul. I say you're a soul. I used to get that confused. What's the difference between a soul and a spirit? Well, you are a soul. Spirit is how that soul expresses itself. The spirit is how the soul expresses itself. So this room has a spirit. We, we, we uh, mentioned that. This, this, this room has a spirit. Um, when you listen to music, it has a certain spirit. You know, um, I, I like to put jazz on because jazz doesn't have any words, but you can still feel what the musicians were going through in that particular time, whether it be the antebellum South, or whether it be just a period in time where they could not perform, you know, um, in at venues uh, that, you know, uh, elevated their artistry. You feel the pain, you feel the joy. Jazz is very spiritual. You gotta understand this organized confusion because if I got my man over here on the bass and I got my man on percussion and I'm playing the trumpet, we got some kungas over here. These are expressions diversely creating a synergy and creating a marriage. That's why some people can't listen to jazz. I can't listen to that. What it is, it's too confusing. It's over here, it's over there, it's just clatter. It took me some time to listen to really understand jazz. <coughs> and then when you understand jazz, you go into who the musicians were, you go into their life story. Their life story. People had problems. They had issues, addicts. Lost their wife and kids. Died too young. So we had all these different, you know, these different things going on. And they're timeless and they live for infinity because we're still listening to it. Record yourself. Record yourself. What do I mean? What I mean is leave something on this earthly plane. 
You're a writer. You're a vocalist. You're a musician. Record it. Grateful for the technology that we have now. Grateful. Grateful. However, with everything, there is a benefit and also um, a con. We have pros and cons with everything. But this also goes back to your choice. Because at that fork, at that crossroads we talked about right here, this is where you make all your choices. This is where you make all your choices. This is why when you you have an ebo, <clears throat> it's a possibility you could be taking that ebo to the crossroads to get rid of it. Because now it's dispersed throughout the universe. We can't even we can't even recall the direction that it went in. All we can say is that it's no longer here. And we don't return to that area so that we do not risk the latching on of that waste or that toxicity that we shed. Take it to the water. You know, take it to the crossroads. Take it to the, to the wilderness. You know? places that you won't see it again. Grateful for the technology that we have now. Grateful. Grateful. However, with everything, there is a benefit and also um, a con. We have pros and cons with everything. But this also goes back to your choice. Because at that fork, at that crossroads we talked about right here, This is where you make all your choices. This is where you make all your choices. This is why when you you have an ebo, <clears throat> it's a possibility you could be taking that ebo to the crossroads to get rid of it. Because now it's dispersed throughout the universe. We can't even we can't even recall the direction that it went in. All we can say is that it's no longer here. And we don't return to that area so that we do not risk the latching on of that waste or that toxicity that we shed. Any questions right here? <laughs> What's an ebo? <laughs> an ebo. is an expiation. Expiation meaning this is something that you do to rectify a particular situation. An ebo, we would say is what we have to do to create a balance. Okay? What we have to do to create a balance. <clears throat> we don't know what that balance is, so we have to perform the ebo in order to learn the balance. The ebo is when you are getting insight from those spirits that are letting you know what it is you need to know or do to rectify your condition. Okay, so it can be spiritual. Definitely, it is spiritual. It's not a material thing. It'll translate through the material though. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's a spiritual act, mm -hmm. but it still takes on a material form. What I'm asking mm -hmm. is really what ways do you, is there a particular practice to reach an ebo? Okay, ebo is a terminology that's used in the Yoruba tradition, Lukumi tradition, Santeria tradition, um, Condomble, um, Obia, Vodun. Mm -hmm. So they use, it's, it, it, the name might change, but that's what the ebo is in the, in the, in the, in the Yoruba culture. Now, the thing is, if you're not in those traditional African systems, outside of that, since this is, uni this is universal, whatever you're practicing on outside of that, they have something mm -hmm. that would be recognized as an ebo, but it would be under a different name. Okay. So. I'm cool. 
Okay. I just want to I want to I want to further explain just a little bit. Yes, sure. For example, like if you're in church, right? And they say at the end of church before they have the benediction, everybody come down so we can pray. And the ministers come out and then you you're standing there and it's like a long line of people and they they'll take some olive oil that's blessed and they'll put it on your crown. That's an ebo. That's translating to actually breaking up <coughs> whatever unevolved base energy that might be upon you so that you can have a fresh start. All right. Particularly pinpoint certain things you wouldn't normally pinpoint in your dreams. The numbers of things, the colors of <coughs> the colors of things, the area and environment of things, um, and particularly the person's the person's visage. What I mean by the visage, I mean their face. Because the face will tell you a lot. It'll show you if something is impersonating as the one you know, or if it is truly them. They will cover their face if it is not truly them, but because they'll use that as a segue to influence you. Because they know that that's the only person that you would allow or accept into that intimate space of the dream world. So they lay in haste. That's why I asked you if you watched the movie Insidious. Very deep movie. Very esoterical. Very. Go back and watch that movie. Don't watch these movies as entertainment. Watch them as students. <clears throat> Take notes. Because they're, they're being so arrogant. They're being arrogant. Look, this is what we got. We got this. And we're going to show them they're still not going to get it. Right. They're going to actually deem it to be entertainment. Right. right. And... We're going to make money at the same time. Yes. Yes. And we're going to make money. And we're going to go with the lunar phases of the moon to make sure all these Negroes really get it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We're going to put this out when, when the moon is at this, you know, we're going to put it when it's waxing. You know, so it's deep. It's deep. So, so with the dreams being reality, that's saying like to say as in dream is future moments, like as in for reality. Right. So we don't we don't deal with the future because the future is a hope. It never it never comes. If that makes any sense, the future never comes. It's now. Time is right. Now. Right. This is this is the most. This is the only thing you want to focus on right now is the now. Because remember, if you're focusing on the now. And rectifying your situation in the now, you don't even have to concern yourself with the future. It's almost like when my grandpa told me, he said, he said, Kareem, listen, if you want to work on your marriage, this is what you do. You make sure that you put all your attention on your wife and you do for her and neglect yourself while she neglects herself and only does for you. That's communal and it's not selfish. We are taking care of each other. But still, the collective is the most important thing. The reason why I said it like that is because they say if you're in, a, in the land for four years, you become native. You can actually, in Arabic, what they do is that you take on the name of that, that mahal or place. So let's say, you know, for example, if, you're in, if, you're in, if you live in Mecca for four years, what's your, what's your name? Queen. Queen? Yeah. So it would be Queen al Mekki. Okay. Because you would have taken on that land. I see. You know, um, Egypt, you would be queen al Misri. Okay. Egypt, because you've taken on that land. And it's also a way in which you can draw some kind of uh, a link to that person. Because you know, if they are attributed to that particular land, they'll have, a certain, they'll have certain characteristics. Mm -hmm. But what happens when you're all over the place? Mm -hmm. you just uh, you just a... Uh, 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 a conglomerate of all these different things, you know, uh, this, a, this, a, this a cauldron. Um, the best education we need as a people is to travel. That's the best education for us. Because in traveling, <coughs> we see the universal, we see the universal dynamic of what our brothers and sisters are experiencing and experiencing in a distant land. Yeah. Very important because we, you know, um, Philadelphia is rich. Mm -hmm. Philadelphia is rich in culture. Philadelphia is rich in history. Philadelphia is as rich as far as our people are concerned. You know, a lot of a lot of our people from down south migrated in Philly. You know, this is 
this is like a hub, you know, for a lot of movements Birth that place. birthplace, no doubt about it, that other places draw the energy from. Sure. But since they have the uh what's the word? Since they have the resources, they can they they, they become famous for it. Yes. You can make it in Philly. No doubt about it. It's True. about opportunity. Explain. I'm asking you. It's oh, it's a question? Yeah. What do you mean? Why well, would you just like, if coming from Philly, like, if people have the resources? Yeah, definitely. Because, you know, it's funny because I noticed some people, they say, yo, you know, people from Philly, they a little bit of country and they a little bit of city. You see what I'm saying? And, the re and I get that. We are a little country because if you notice, if you're a, a Philadelphian, you have a certain etiquette, a way you carry spirit. yourself. Yes. Your spirit, no doubt about it. And that's not a bad thing because our, our ancestors are at Boone, you know, that come from the down south, they were masterful with their interactions. Masterful. You wouldn't even know what he you, you wouldn't know what he was thinking. You wouldn't know what she was thinking. Because they've led a, a led a led a life of not being able to actually be or convey who they really are. Listen, I'm gonna bring my religion to this new world. But I know that it's a matter of life and death. And if he gets a whiff of what we're practicing in isolation, we could be killed for it. You gotta understand, even the chains, the yokes on our neck, it represented Ogun. It represented Ogun. We became strong in our resolve because it didn't break us. <clears throat> we knew that if we were locked down, and they knew that if we were locked down, there was always a chance of us becoming free and breaking those those chains or, the, or that yoke around our neck. This is why they had to do something a little bit more sophisticated by enslaving you mentally. You have to benefit from it. So we can read these books, but it's different from experiencing it. I mean, you can even channel with reading these books. You can channel, you can read the book and actually go to a place, bring it to you. You want to read? A, you want to go to Africa? Start reading books on Africa. Start, start, start uh, learning some some uh, African languages like Swahili or something like that. You'd be you'd be astounded how fast you you on the next plane out of here because you're bringing it into existence. I can't say, man. I, you know, I want to go to Morocco and I'm not learning French and I'm not learning Daraja, which is the language of the people, or learning Fusha, which is classical Arabic, because. I'm not going to have an experience when I get there. I'm going to still be a tourist. I don't want to be a tourist. I want to be able to go where the people are. I want to go, I want to experience how the people live so I can really have an experience. I don't want to live in no five-star hotel. I don't want to eat McDonald's when I go to Morocco. I want tagine. I want couscous. We take America with us, further infecting the people that we're going to see and, and liberate. How? How? If you bring in America with you, you got to be humble. You got to be vulnerable. You got to be open to say, listen, I don't know. Show me. Because in Africa, the brothers and sisters think we white people just black. And we have different stereotypes of our sisters and brothers throughout the diaspora too. So we need to have the conversation. We need to have the conversation. Why is it that we go to these Ben Bays and we see the Cubans over here and the Africans over here? Why? A Ben Bay is like a, a, a party for the Orisha. It's almost like what we have in the church as far as speaking in tongues. And, in, and if you go to the really holy churches or the Baptist churches, you have a person that's speaking in tongues, you have another person there that can translate the tongue. Yeah. Or you can have a person that speaks in tongue and they can translate their own tongue. Mm -hmm. I remember being in church, man. Um, I remember being in church and it, that was the best part of church for me. When somebody was speaking in tongues, but when somebody was cutting the chicken, that was the best time for me. Because it let me know that, yo, we live, we, we, we live in. We alive. You dig me? They call it moving, spirit is moving. Exactly. Trance, 
So the thing is, it's like, okay, that was the best time. You got to understand, it's, it's torture. Being a child and just, you know, no, we didn't do that. Everybody was involved. Children were involved, the adults were involved, the elders were involved, and we still do that because in the front row you see the elders and the preacher doesn't get permission to speak without first consulting the mother. And we know that spirit doesn't come out and pre people don't get possessed until the choir starts to activate that with their ofo ashe, with their spoken word or their tongue. Those songs are vibratory. When we was doing all that clapping in the... We're bringing, we're bringing that energy. We're bringing that energy. And nobody in this room can front and be like they ain't never been in that environment before. The thing is, you can't look at your past and be like, yo, you know, I'm going to totally, you know, shun that part of my life. But see, when I talk to people and they talk to me about dreams, they like, yo, what does this dream mean? Can you interpret this dream? It's like, well, what are the specifics? Because if you had the specifics, you would be able to interpret it yourself. I'm not interpreting, I'm using the symbols that you're telling me were involved in the dream, so I'm able to draw a correlation. It's almost like a tea leaf reading with, with your teacup. You know what I'm saying? When you, when you take that tea, the loose tea leaves, and you know you have a nice little conversation with the person that's, that you're in front of, that you're reading, this is the thing, this is the thing. You attract bees with honey, not vinegar. That person you're doing a service for, you want them to feel as comfortable as possible, so when spirit comes, they'll be unshackled. So you got your little, you know, you got your tea, you're sipping some nice shea, they call it uh, tea shea in Arabic. Shea, that's the Arabic word for tea. Shea is tea, and kahwa is coffee. All right? So you're drinking your tea, and then after you finish, you know, having this mellow, you know, nice conversation, you take their cup. Use the excess tea leaves and you just swirl it around. You got your top layer, I mean your bottom layer, your <coughs> mid layer, and your high up layer. And you spin in the cup. And then you watch as the oracle unfolds. Because those tea leaves are going to take shape. So you're looking at the tea leaf now and it, for, it's form, it forms a handgun. Ah. Uh, you know, um... Is there any enemies that you have? You know, um, do you feel as though you have to conceal who you are? And the thing is, is that you'll start to become more proficient and masterful with it the more you do it. The more you do it. Brothers was doing I Ching in, 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 in college. Killing the game. I said, how you do that? Tossing coins, breaking, you know what I mean? The each thing is layer, leveling it out. Yo, this is what this means, this is what that means. High sciences, young boy. So it's like, yo, as a shaman, you should never be nowhere in a place without your divin divinatory tools. Stop being, stop getting the EBGBs. Stop getting the EBGB. You should run to your fear. Run to what you fear. Because when you run to what you fear, you're running to your liberation. You're running to your liberation. There's a monster in the closet. There's a monster underneath the bed. Turn the light on, open the closet, and look underneath the bed. There's nothing there. But now you understand that if it was a boogeyman there, they don't appreciate the light. That's science in itself. Science in itself. So, um, any other questions? Yes? <clears throat> you know, the banana man, um, yeah, goon love you. They love you. They not like some zealous or zealous religious person fanatical and say that you have to have this and like this and like this and, no. Oh, just as long as you're thinking about them, they know that. And if all I have is a banana, all I, all I have is a tang tangerine or an apple. If all I, ha if all I has, have is a peppermint, I'm still sharing with them in the process of elevating them. So they know, you know what? Kareem didn't forget us. You know, everybody in the family thinks we're dead. 
but Kareem is looking out. You know, and it's and what'll happen is your greater works will be in your children and you. I gotta keep all this up. Oh my God, did I do this the wrong way? Oh my God, if I don't do this, something's gonna get me. What should I wear today? It was just too much. Cause I was coming from that religious space of, if you don't do what God says, you're going to hell. So I had to, I had to check myself and see, you know, no, don't bring this over here. You're liberating yourself from here or from there. And you're, you know, you're, you're elevating. You understand? Why do you think the monks in the monastery, they chant mantras? Or the sadhus in India, why do they chant or just stay in one particular, just stay in one place for long periods of time? Because they hope to die like that. So they ain't got to come back to this incarnation. They go further. They don't want to get caught out there doing something that is not in alignment with something other than their elevation. So they spend their entire lives being an earth walker on this physical plane, doing everything not to come back and to elevate and become students of knowledge in the higher, higher, higher bleachers. In the bleachers. The nose bleeds. We have to understand that we are these people. We have to understand that whether you're from Philly, whether you're from New York, whether you're from the, the boom the balloon, I don't know, boondocks, whatever you're from. The all is everywhere. The all is everywhere. I wanted to say that the all is everywhere and the all is nowhere. This is true. All is everywhere and the all is nowhere. That was on my spirit, like, better say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, <coughs> any more questions? Lord, Lord, nah. Huh? Nah. No? Nah. How long you been back here? <sighs> um, I've been back from Egypt. Egypt was my last place I went. And no, I did not travel from the military. I traveled because <clears throat> it was incumbent upon me to make the hijra, the migration from Dar al Kufa, from the land of disbelief. So I said, I will not stay here one more day and I will travel. Wow. I'm, I'm, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. It was a great thing, though. That was your journey. That was my journey. Thank you, sister. That was my journey. And you know what? This is my initiation. This is my initiation because I've known Hawk for a minute. Did, did you know that it's not any one word to explain how great God is? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, when you say that, I, I, I think about the Tao. When they say that if you can name the way, uh, the way is unnameable. The, the moment you can name the way, it's not the way anymore. See what I'm saying? Because we put all this heavy jargon on different things, and at the end of the day, we're just explaining things into a, a stupor where we don't even know what we're talking about. Something deep, man. This is something deep. I was watching something with Dick Gregory the other day. This is deep! Yo, Dick Gregory is a sage. I'm looking at, listen, first of all, and you know what? Like I went to college and everything like that, went to university. I had professors teach me how to code switch. And code switch is nothing more than you being able to change the language for the population or the people that are around you. It's not being white. Is that what they call it? That's, this is the misnomer. <laughs> we do it all the time. So I saw Dick Gregory. He was like in this interview, man. Listen. <coughs> He said something that was so profound. He said, you know, basically when I want to turn it off, I turn it off and I act like the, you know, I 
just act like this. For real? Oh. <laughs> I just don't know. And it was just like, wow, he went into character. And it's like, turning on the switch, turning on this, turning off the switch, in order to be an invisible man. When we look at the term invisible man, that means you can go in any circle that you want to. And you have information that precedes possibly the initiates that are in that circle and they can't detect you because they can't read you. You become invisible. That's what we have to strive towards. Because when you become invisible, you can actually go in places and actually help people. I, and before they know it, you've already helped them. After they receive the help, that's when they scratch their head and be like, yo, she just helped me. He just helped me. I, I'm, I feel different now. Once you become different and you change, you can't go back. People do go back, but it's very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. Because you're living a fabrication. So, as I always progress and proceed for. Indeed. 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 So, family, um, again, I appreciate you know you guys coming out. We having this conversation. Um, and <clears throat> I pray that the Creator gives us all safe travels back um, to our homes and we're protected from harm seen and unseen and that our our family is blessed we're blessed we're prosperous and good um, we're elevated we become elevated um, we don't get sidetracked by the hamster wheel we step off the hamster wheel and we are courageous and brave and not fearful and when we do have uh, moments in which our faith and our and our, and our strength is, is low. We're sent, we're sent those people that help to reestablish our strength. Um, I pray that we all have a long life, and not just a long life, because long life you could be miserable in a long life, but I pray that we all have long life with abundance and health. And oh, Amen. Um, Brother protected. He's protected. I shake, I shake, I shake, I shake.